So Catherine Parkinson and Joe Lysett, thank you for joining us here today. How are you both? Very good. Thank you. I'm great, thank you. Oh, great. Uh, especially Catherine, thank you so much for being the person who really inspired the idea behind the art auction and also the first to contribute as well. Oh, I mean, you know, I don't think my paintings are as good as Joe's. Well, we're going to see in just a moment because we have got both of your pictures to uh, to have a look at. Um, but firstly, I mean, Catherine, you've got so many connections to Cornwall. Is it an important place to you? It's absolutely. I mean, it's probably my favourite place. Uh, I have, um, well, all of my family. I mean, if I did an episode of Who Do You Think You Are, it would be, I think, probably quite dull because I think they're all from the same sort of stretch of road in Cornwall on my mum's side. My <clears throat> my dad's from Belfast, but my mum's family are all from Cornwall. And then my, my eldest brother married a Cornish lady and I have three Cornish nephews and... Um, and then I did the job Doc Martin, which took me down to Cornwall. And um, I spent a lot of time there when I was doing that. And so I've, you know, basically my husband and I want to end up there ASAP. Yeah, that would be so good. Uh, I mean, have you got any sort of favourite towns, favourite places, obviously where you were filming with, with Doc Martin, but uh, anywhere in particular that inspires you? Well, I really like Damer Bay, particularly because I was there when nobody else was there and um, briefly felt... Um, uh, that I uh, was touched by God. I remember one on a, on a run I did there, but that quickly passed. But you can feel quite spiritual, I think, when you're in that beautiful landscape on your own. Um, and then I, I'm very fond of Truro as well, um, where my sister-in-law is from. Oh, fantastic. And uh, is painting something you've always done? Because obviously we've got your pictures for the for the art auction. Well, my mum reminded me, I've always done caricatures of people, but I've never been the sort of artist in the family because my mum paints brilliantly. And my, my grandfather, her father was was actually a, a painter. Uh, that's what he, he did. He painted for encyclopedias, very, very similar Tudinous uh, pictures of like birds and things. Um, so I and I haven't got that ability at all. So um, I'm a bit a little bit more stylized. But since the first lockdown, I just had this kind of sort of art breakdown where I just couldn't stop doing paintings. And I kept bombarding poor Joe with photos. I have to say he was the, the most encouraging person about my art. Thank you, Joe. It's so good. No, I, love I, your art. I love your sculptures. Mostly I sent these pictures of kind of clay masks and to, to friends and they just didn't they went unreplied just people just ignored my text but joe was always very positive so i started with some clay masks uh and then i've moved on to uh acrylics yeah and i believe joe you, you were kind of the inspiration for for catherine sort of painting during lockdown i mean do you find it beneficial for yourself you, you you've been painting quite a long time i mean it's it's nice to hear that i was um encouraging i don't i I literally think sent about four texts going, great, like, love that. I, th I don't think you I was... stopped sending photos of these great clay masks. That was more than I got from anyone else. I mean, you well, know. that's very disappointing. You need to get yeah, new yeah. friends, Catherine. Mm. Um, yeah, I uh, uh, was, well, I just love it when people surprise you with artistic um, skill, I suppose, or, or just even just the, the desire to do it because um, it often catches you off guard. The, my most recent one's Alice Levine, the um, very funny woman and also uh, she's presented radio. We know who Alice Levine is. I don't need to go through her CV, but she texted me and was like, we were talking about something and she was like, I can't stop drawing these flowers that I've got in the house. And she sent me these drawings. They're amazing, like really beautiful. And I struggle to draw flowers because I, 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 I'm quite good with block colours, but I'm not good with shading and whatever, and flowers require a lot of shading. And she just sent me these incredible drawings that she'd done and, and watercolours and whatever. And I love it. I just think it's really, um, it just shows you another side to a person. So I'm, I'm all about encouraging everyone to have a go at painting and making things because it's, uh, it's good for the soul. And did you do loads in lockdown when lockdown started, Joe? Like I did. No, uh, at the first lockdown, I I I, I realised obviously subconsciously I decided to work out what it's like to drink a bottle of white wine a day, and uh, and had a really good time doing that. You know, pretty smashed through some white wine. 
But uh, it got to a point where I thought, this is getting out of hand now. <laughs> and so, uh, so curbed that slightly. But yeah. um, the, 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 cr the creative thing I was doing was um, gardening. I was doing loads of um, stuff in the garden because it was about this time last year, wasn't it? So it was sort of everything was starting to get going. So, um, so that was my sort of creative outlet. And then painting, I started. I mean, I was doing little bits, but not loads. But I started doing a bit more recently and painting stuff in the garden. So it's sort of all merged. I was going to say, because obviously we've, we've seen some of uh, your, your gardening online. You, you've got your lemons and uh, your composting that you've been doing. It's, it's amazing. I mean, do, do you find these kinds of things, you know, the, the art and, and the gardening, are, are these good ways, obviously, you know, especially during lockdown, but just to, to yeah. relax and just get yourself into, into a good frame of mind? Massively. I think uh, gardening, well, any creativity, any making things uh, is so good for your mental health and gardening particularly because it's paired with the being outdoors, being around greenery, which they've done studies into, which show uh, market improvement of people's mental health. Um, so it's, it was a real solace for me, a real, um, cause yeah, I, I, I was over, I was working too much basically before the lockdown, I was working too much, getting a little bit sad and not not sad particularly, but just sort of a bit overwhelmed and a bit anxious, and um, and gardening and and painting sort of helps so much with that. So I think these th things do help people. It's fi it's finding something that you know you just enjoy and then can take you you know into that mindful space. Um, but Joe, I'm also interested in uh, sort of your your family history with painting because you you I've seen on Instagram your mum's a painter as well. She and is. <laughs> Well, yeah, she's an amazing painter, although I like to, whenever I post about her, say how awful her art is, just to really uh, annoy her. Um, but she's an extraordinary uh, watercolour uh, painter. And watercolour's really hard, because you have to... It is really hard. I, yeah, I, I've have tried. You tried it? You've obviously tried, I tried it. it. And I tried oils as well, and didn't get on with either. But my mum, too, is a watercolourist, and... Uh, I thought it would be sort of easy <laughs> because yeah. you know you sort of do a bit of watercolor when you're a child, don't you? Um, yeah. And uh, I, I have found it impossible. Yeah, I think you yeah. have to be. Well, you have to be sure. basically really patient and and accept that the first thousand paintings that you do are going to be totally awful, and and sort of build up from there. It's a bit like doing stand up because the first thousand gigs you do doing stand up, you don't have no idea what you're doing, and. Um, and then gradually build up. But the thing with watercolour is you can't, you can't really go back on what you've done. Mm. Like, with acrylic, you can wait for it to dry or you can mix the paint on the canvas. With watercolour, it's just there. It's like done. It's soaked into the paper. So you kind of like, well, that's it. That's, that's the painting I've done. And it's diabolical. Mm. So um, I'm, I'm in total awe of her skill with it because she does these extraordinary portraits, but with the hardest medium. I don't know how she does it. Um, but yes, yeah, so, but the, the original Joseph Lysett, uh, who I'm not sure if I was re related to or not, was an Australian painter who became, uh, he did a lot of landscapes, but um, he became quite notorious because he forged banknotes. And that was his, uh, that was his little side, side <laughs> hustle. So, um, I mean, that could be a future for me, I suppose. Oh, you never know. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, yeah. for, the, for the art auction, we were looking for something that either reminded you of Cornwall or gave you thoughts of the place. And uh, I, I know, Catherine, you, you may have seen uh, the picture. Let me just bring it up so we can uh, have, have a little look at it. I don't think it looks like Martin Clunes, that painting. <laughs> so that's the picture. So, Joe, do you want to talk us through uh, the inspiration here? Uh, I don't know, actually. I Googled a picture of him and, and that's what I ended up with. <laughs> I, I'm going to make this more serious and tell you that a genuine concern I have about my painting that I've donated. Shall we have a look then? Because I'm not sure whether, whether Joe's seen your picture. So let me just bring this up here. So we've got two two pictures, haven't we, Catherine? So there's the two pictures there. So uh, I think she'll be flattered by those. I think she'll... Well, well, the thing is, the proper job, which is obviously an expression, a Cornish expression, I didn't think as I wrote it that people might think I was criticising the royal family and suggesting they should get proper jobs. We should just explain this. This is uh, but pictures of of Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, that you've done for us. Yes, my um, picture of Camilla, who I'm, you know, big 
I always think seems really lovely from afar. Uh, and I just, I sort of, I, what I try to do, I don't know if it comes across in the painting, is make her hair like waves and a sort of sunset behind her. And then there's like land, at her sort of shoulders. I can't, I don't know if you can see that. It's the Cornish landscape. This is in her face. How long did it take you? And how did you, you sort of start? Was, was it from a photo? No, I can't remember. I mean, I was, I've been obviously homeschooling like everyone else and I just sort of flicked my children off me and sort of, uh, and then kind of <laughs> just sort of down some wine and found whatever. I quite often paint with children's paints. Um, and <laughs> I think I use some uh, pastels, acrylic pastels on one of them. Um, but no, it's always done in a very haphazard way. I think what I love about Joe's paintings, because I, I think, is going to donate one to me soon um uh is that how funny they are like and uh, I, I like art with a, a sense of humor and um uh i love um grace and perry and uh you know just paintings that kind of um uh have uh that sort of energy too which is why i love the... a bit of character to them yeah so uh Mine isn't supposed to be. I sort of started off thinking I'll do a lovely kind of sea view from kind of Falmouth or Harbour or something, but I just that's basically beyond my skills, if I'm being honest. Oh, I think they're fantastic. Joe, Joe what, do you, what did you think when you, when you saw them there? I love them. I love the colours in them. I, 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 I agree about them. Um, I, like I like art that's funny, and I love people like David Shrigley for that reason, because he's very funny. But <clears throat> I think what... Uh, what I love about funny is that it's about truth essentially and it's about kind of um, uh, you generally laugh at something because it resonates because it means something it connects with something that you believe or whatever inside you and and I think the that can be applied to a lot of art and in the sense of the caricature which isn't an exact uh, you know you're not trying to recreate a painting but you're trying to get to the truth of somebody. And that's what I love about Catherine's stuff is that it's, uh, you can totally see Camilla there and it kind of brings out a colour of Camilla that I see her as quite a sort of, no offence Camilla if you're listening, but a bit grey. And all of that life and colour that there must be in there because, you know, as we have discovered recently, the sort of forward facing royals have to be a bit kind of grey and a bit kind of dull. But behind the scenes, there's a lot more going on. And I think that's sort of what Catherine's painting of or paintings of Camilla have, have done is sort of shown the kind of wilder side of which we all know it's there. <laughs> well, obviously, we, we're hoping to raise a lot of money for mental health here in Cornwall for our art auction. Um, and uh, you know, this year has affected so many people in so many ways. So is mental health something that you're both keen to be recognised? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, it's, uh, as I mentioned before, like my mental health definitely took a slight wobble about 18 months ago. And it was surprised me really because my mental health had been quite robust up until that point. I'd sort of managed to, I don't know, avoid being um, caught by it. Um, and then just suddenly I started to get these sort of physical symptoms. Of, the, the, the most annoying one was I was getting this like nausea and I couldn't really eat meals without feeling like I was going to be sick. And I love eating and it was so annoying. And um, I thought it was like a physical, you know, I thought, because I, I, I like to catastrophize these things. So I was like, I'm dying, it's over for me. And, um, and then went and saw a, a therapist and she was like, no, you're just a bit overworked and over, overtired and overstressed and all those things. And um, I've had some really good therapy and feel a lot better. But I have access to that because I'm on the telly and I've got money. And there's lots of people who don't have that. And that is a real issue and a real problem because um, it's wildly underfunded and, um, and it's something that most of us will suffer with. So we should, I mean, I'm not saying any, you know, I'm not breaking the wheel by, um, or reinventing the wheel, whatever the phrase is, by saying that. But um, uh, I think the more we say it, the better, you know, I think it's important that we remember that access to mental health stuff is, um, is really not acceptable. Yeah, because we, I mean, we, we always say mental health, you know, it's the same as physical health. We all have mental health of, of some kind. And for, for many people, you know, we have good mental health and, you know, it, do, it doesn't really affect us. But sometimes, you know, in that sort of scale, it can go down and, and we can have poor mental health over time. And, and yeah. uh, 
And I think especially in the last year, a lot of people who haven't had experiences before have suddenly you know, like you say, suddenly felt anxious or suddenly felt just uncomfortable or, you know, the whole change yeah. into our lives has really, you know, made a difference. So so we are you know, experiencing things that we may not have experienced before and, and knowing, knowing there is help out there and we are really, all of us are experiencing something in, in some form or another, aren't we? Yeah. Well, we're not built for the life that we have, you know, we're not built for Twitter and Zoom calls and texts and news about what's happening in japan and we're not our minds can't cope with that and never have had to deal with that um, a volume of information before and that sort of sense of kind of looming threat from a million different places and so of course there's going to be anxiety and whatever and the thing i'd say to anyone who's, who's listening who's suffering with anxiety at the minute um as i did is really hold on to it it's something people told me but like really hold on to the fact that it does pass. Like it can't, it can't stick around forever because you can't be in that heightened state. If you're having a panic attack, it's not comfortable, but it's not going, you can't be in that state for very long. And, um, and just sort of, yeah, try, try and seek as whatever help you can get. But, um, but you know, it's, it's not um, for life, you know, you know, you're not going to be, I, I definitely had periods where I was like, oh, God, I've gone. I had this thing where I was in bed and I, was, I think I was having like a mild panic attack. And I thought my arms had got huge. And I thought I had my, massive giant arms. And I thought, oh, is this my life now? I've got giant arms, have I? Is this, I'm going to wander around down the street with giant arms. Look at my lovely normal arms. <laughs> I whip. Take that anxiety. <laughs> it does. It affects us in so many ways, and also, if it's not ourselves that are, are being affected, it's people around us, our friends and family, and and really, it's having this conversation and just being open. Because I think once you actually speak about it and say, you know, you're feeling a certain way, other people will sort of say, oh, actually, do you know what? I've I've been feeling that, and I've I've been af- too afraid to ask or yeah. too afraid to talk. Yeah. Well, that's what's so good about charities like Mind is that it, it, it normalizes us talking about this and makes it like chill it's not it doesn't have to be heavy it doesn't have to be like oh god everything has to stop it's just like oh i get these sort of uh, irritating symptoms from time to time and then they pass and you know and talking about that in 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 that kind of way i think is good but so many people have texted over lockdown have had anxiety and and weirdly they've had it at like the same time they're like people that don't know each other and live in different places but obviously something has happened on the news or something and it's sort of the delayed reaction means that people have had anxiety at similar points and that we are all quite similar actually and you're not if you're suffering with it you're definitely not on your own and there's definitely nothing wrong with you it's just like just an irritating part of life and and Catherine would you echo those sentiments as well um just what a lovely boy joe is is, is he speaks so well uh, and I just think that was beautifully put I um I am from a family who ha- how there, there have been a lot of instances of of mental health uh, specifically with women in my family I um um ha- have not had uh, specific mental health issues but I think back to when I was doing exams and the anxiety what would definitely be called anxiety now and even a sort of kind of breakdown of sorts around my uh, A levels and it's interesting when we talk about art and the value of art and being creative because the times that I have struggled with that sort of anxiety um has been when I haven't had any creative outlet in my life and I mean I don't want to be sort of you know but I, I do think particularly if you're a creative person I think you do need to to respect that that is what you are and that that you need to have that in your life you need to not always be um, doing the kind of boring administrative type work that a lot of academic work involves. I do feel for the younger generation now because uh, I do avoid social networking because I just I just feel instinctively I would feel quite overwhelmed <clears throat> with it all and um, and and you know I think talking is is such a valuable um, cure for these things and from as I say my. I have family members that haven't done that. And then, you know, the worst kind of situation has um, ensued. And so I I just think that now we are much better at having those conversations. And and I think art art and mental health are absolutely synonymous. And it's, uh, 
um yeah being able to do these kinds of things in lockdown is, is really helpful for people. But, you know, we are we're hopefully getting to that point now where, where lockdown is coming to an end and things are getting back to normal again. So we're looking looking forward. Um, Joe, you've got some exciting things happening. I know your series, Joe Lice, It's Got You Back, is coming back to our screen soon. Yes. If you or anyone you know has been roughed up by a company or, and what's really exciting is, or if you know of companies that, or small local companies that need help, because uh, of the pandemic and all of that. Um, we want to know because we want to sort of help those companies, but also take on the bad guys again. So you can email gotyourback at rumpusmedia.co.uk. Nice catchy email there uh, to, uh, to send in your issues, I suppose. <laughs> And Catherine, we're hoping, of course, the, the theatres will re- reopen soon. Getting you know, the arts back is really vital for many people, those that work in it and those that experience it. So uh, hopefully that, that's coming up very soon. Catherine's written a thing that my friend Mark Wyman is in, and that will be on the television soon, won't it? Is, is this uh, sitting, which uh, you, um, you had up in, up in Edinburgh and then uh, been touring around on, in, in theatres? It's only relevant to mention, really, because it is about mental health. So it's a, it's a, a relevant piece. So, and, and also yeah. um, w- with the art world as well, because some of the characters are um, artists. Yes, I'm friends with an artist other than Joe. I'm friends with an artist called Roxana Halls, who actually I think you'd love her work, Joe. Um, she's a brilliant artist and uh, she's done the paintings. She's done them um, paintings of the three actors, me and Mark and a great actress called Alex Jarrett in this show. So um, maybe, uh, maybe you want to buy that Joe, the painting of me and have it just above your bed. Yes, I think so. Oh, I, I'm look, just looking at Roxana Halls. These are great, aren't they? I, yeah, I have one of her paintings. She's a brilliant uh, um, painter and and, yeah, and lovely. Love yeah. Well, listen. I think you're get, we're going to raise so much money with you, with your paintings as well. There's there's so, so much interest uh, in, in your particular paintings, both yours, Catherine, and yours, Joe. So, uh, and we're going to raise lo- lots of money for mental health here in Cornwall for Cornwall Mind. So, listen. Thank you so much for being part of this. So fantastic. Thank you, Catherine Parkinson and Joe Lysett for being with us today. My pleasure. My pleasure.